Steven Godani here at the new Top Velocity Baseball Science Series where we go out and do the hard work for you to bring you the latest in high velocity pitching science. Mm -hmm. Today we've got two great studies for you to cover ground reaction forces and the lower legs for the high velocity pitcher. And the first study we're going to go at is called Characteristic Ground Reaction Forces and Beginner Pitchers. And scientist Steven here is going to fill us in on the methods that they use in this study. Yeah, sure. So they took elite pitchers who were averaging 80 miles per hour and an average age of 20 years or older. Beginning pitchers averaging 53 miles per hour uh, below 20 years of age. So they were pretty much told to throw 10 pitches into a net and then they were going to measure their ground reaction forces in their drive leg and in their front leg. And that's what we have here. We have the actual graph so we can see these ground reaction forces going off. And we have this first phase, which would be the stride phase, basically with 3x pitching, now we define the stride phase, to zero, mark zero, being front foot strike, and then the throwing phase going to mark one, which is where they release the ball. The elite pitchers, well, 80 miles per hour, once again, low ball speeds for the elites, mm -hmm. uh, but we do see a big difference between the elites and the beginners, so we get an understanding, uh, a more exaggerated understanding of high velocity, low velocity, but we can see the elites have the dash line of the drive leg forces, the beginners have the, the heavier dash line of ground reaction force from the drive leg. Going into front foot strike, the elites have the thicker uh, uh, line here for ground reaction force of the front leg, and, and then the beginners have a lighter line for the ground reaction force of the front leg. What we're seeing is the low velocity pitchers, the beginner pitchers, have a more gradual increase ground reaction forces going somewhere just above one times body weight, and then the elite peach pitchers have an impulse to peak those forces higher uh, at 1.5 times body weight, and then it has a harder decline of those forces going into front foot strike. So we're seeing high velocity pitchers peaking more forces out of the drive leg. Then at front foot, we're seeing the same thing out of the front leg. We're seeing ground reaction forces peak for the high velocity pitcher, lead pitchers higher, and that would be speculated as front leg stabilization, and then dipping a little bit, and then peaking again before pitch release speculated as front leg extension, where the beginner pitchers have just a little gradual increase, mm -hmm. somewhere still just to maybe one times, 1.5 times body weight, and the lead pitcher's got it all the way up to almost two times body weight in the front leg. So what we're learning here is, and then what the studies show, there was a direct correlation to ground reaction forces in both the drive leg and stride leg uh, to pitching velocity. So that's great to know for all of, of us out there in the 3X Pitch Velocity programs learning uh, how to increase those forces through all of our 3X drills and our also fusion system and our Olympic based strength and conditioning. Now we're gonna bring in another study that really gives us another cr critical great benefit to uh, improve ground reaction forces in the lower limbs. This study is called Stride Length Compensation and their impacts on baseball transfer ground reaction forces and baseball pitchers. This was done at the University of Buffalo and uh, it was actually either funded or supported by uh, the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, scientist Steven here is going to give us uh, some of the methods behind this case study. Yeah, sure. So they took uh, 19 collegiate and high school level pitchers. They were averaging uh, 78.5 miles per hour. Um, they measured their kinematics, their ground reaction forces, and their ball velocity. They were told to pitch two games, 80 pitches each game, 20 pitches an inning. So they placed a marker on the mound uh, of, a, of a stride length. And if the guys strided over that, they were called overstriders. And if they strided um, uh, before, or if they hit their front foot hit before the marker, they were called understriders. Yeah, and, the, and then the placement of those force plates were drive leg force plate to front leg force plate. So they mm -hmm. had two placements for the overstriders and the understriders. And we can see here in the first uh, data coming from the linear hand velocities, we see that the overstriders had an average of 46 miles per hour on their linear hand velocity, and the understriders had only an average of 45 miles per hour on their linear hand velocity. So the overstriders who were generating more forces, and they showed from the results of ground reaction force data, we have found that the drive leg ground reaction forces was on average less in the overstriders than the understriders, but the vertical impulse uh, ground reaction forces and the anterior posterior impulse ground reaction forces was greater in the overstriders than the understriders. On the stride leg, we saw both of the averages of ground reaction forces and the vertical impulse and the anterior posterior impulse of ground reaction forces was greater in the overstriders than the understriders. All right, so what it's showing us is that there is 
as the force production, the impulses increase in the drive leg and the stride leg, the linear hand velocities were increasing. But when we look at the fastball velocities, we see that the overstriders and understriders um, had uh, some different numbers. So what we've learned here is that the overstriders and understriders were able to keep the same velocity at 78.5 miles per hour with the fastball velocities as those ground reaction forces and impulses increased. So what is this telling us? Before we go into uh, you know, the speculation, let's look at one more study. All right, and this other study helps us understand more about what we could speculate here is that Kibler and Chandler did a study on baseball and tennis, and they found that a 20% decrease in kinetic energy delivered from the hip and trunk to the arm requires a 34% increase in the rotation of velocity on the shoulder to put the same force on the hand. So with these two studies, what we're seeing is that force production or kinetic energy, energy coming up the body, if it decreases, then what happens is it creates overcompensation. So if we look at our overstriders in this study and to our understriders, our understriders had a decrease in kinetic energy, force production, impulsive force, and it caused a decrease in the, the linear hand velocity, but they were still to throw just as hard because they were able to overcompensate like we found in that Kibler Chandler study, uh, creating that 34% increase if there was a 20% decrease. So, it's revolutionary. It's showing us that ground reaction forces not only are pivotal to increasing ball speed, but also pivotal to reducing arm injury because where there's lack of ground reaction forces, there's gonna be an increase of wear and tear. And that's what we learned in these case studies here. Mm -hmm. All right, so we appreciate you uh, watching. We hope you like uh, these studies and you like the show. If you do, please comment, uh, please uh, share, please, uh, um, participate, give us some suggestions on studies you'd like to learn more about, and we'll bring that out to you. I will see you on the next episode.